on bowling is more than just a game. There's no talking on the green. Genuine 1972 prices and nothing this soft. The stick it right up the right up. Welcome to Without Bias. Brought to you by Apia. Proudly supporting Bowls Australia. Apia, dedicated specialists ready to help. Call 13 50 50. Apia, get set, go. Local legends wanted. A bowls green is just up the road. Search bowls clubs near me. Yeah, welcome to Without Bias for another week. Great to have your company. John Donahoe stepping in for Sammy Hargraves. A big show ahead. Joining us shortly, Karen Murphy, Bowls Australia National Assistant Coach. He's also the Pathways Manager, a National Selector, and of course, a legendary former Jackaroo. And then later on, current Jackaroo, Chloe Stewart, fresh off a bronze medal at the Australian Championships, is going to join us. But first, regrettably... Due to COVID-19 enforced lockdown in Victoria, the 2020 Australian Championships being staged at Club Dandenong this week were cancelled mid-event. Six disciplines were run and won, while a further three disciplines were not able to be held. All community bowls in Victoria will be paused until the end of lockdown and can reoccur from June the 4th. Bowls Australia will advise any relevant updates in relation to participation and competition across their social media channels. And Bowls Australia hopes the Bowls community stays safe and healthy throughout this fourth lockdown, which is obviously the most important thing. Let's get into it. Let's get our first guest on the show. Bowls Australia Hall of Fame member and multiple Commonwealth Games medalist, but nowadays heavily involved off the bowling green as well. Karen Murphy, welcome to Without Bias. Thanks for having me, guys. No worries. You've had such a phenomenal year being appointed as the national assistant coach earlier in 2021 to work under under Gary Willis. Talk to us about how you found your first few months in the position. Yeah, well, it's really only been about five weeks, um, Don. So it's um, it's gone really quickly. Um, it's been great. You know, like I'm really passionate about about coaching and, and being back involved again with everyone is, is wonderful. And, uh, you know, I just feel grateful to be in a position and a, and a, a job where, you know, like I, I think I'm going to really enjoy it. I have already. And it's been fantastic. Yeah. Really looking forward to, um, you know, obviously the upcoming events that are coming up, uh, hopefully COVID doesn't spoil that too much. <laughs> no, I hope not. <laughs> hey, you did mention there you, you love coaching. How did your drive to become a coach come, come about? Yeah, I suppose it was probably a bit of a natural progression after I retired, but um, I've actually had my own coaching business for 10 or 11 years now. So um, there's certainly a need for it, I think, in, in Australia. You know, in Australia, we have some really great coaches and we're probably well advanced in comparison to other countries, but there still is a real need for it. I mean, an example of that is we only probably have about 14 or 15 advanced uh, coaches in Australia, which is not a lot. So... Um, my progression, I suppose, was fairly natural from playing to coaching and, um, you know, something that I really wanted to do, I suppose, as a career post, uh, you know, post playing. So I, I'm really lucky to be able to, to be doing that. Do you have much to do with former coach Steve Glasson? He left a big legacy that is, uh, I guess, on the Jackaroos following his decade in charge. He left a big mark there. Yeah, definitely. Uh, spent the, the weekend with him last weekend in Adelaide at a uh, 100th anniversary at a club at Barmera in country South Australia. So um, very good mates with Glass. Um, really proud of the legacy that he has left with the Jackaroos. His, um, you know, his drive for culture within the Jackaroos was was brilliant. And, um, you know, I certainly think that you never perfect that. You can work at it really hard. So, um, Glass has been amazing. You know, I know a lot of the players were, were quite sad, obviously, when Glass left. But, um, you know, like change isn't always a bad thing. Um, Gary's a wonderful coach. You know, like he's just so, you know, he, he's, he's similar to Glass, but he's also different as well. He brings mm-hmm. his own qualities. And, and uh, yeah, I've known Gaz since we were 13 years old. So, um, you know, I know the, you know, it's hard for athletes, I think, you know, when there is change, you know, it's... Um, mm-hmm. You know, it, you know, it's sort of, you know, you you get used to a, a certain style and, and set up, I suppose, within the staff set up. But, um, you know, I think, it, you know, as I said, change is exciting as well for them. So um, reactivation camp come July, it's going to be sort of a reset for our Jackaroos uh, and pathways and emerging players all getting together as one. So um, should be good fun. For those tuning in who haven't heard much of the progress of the team, 
How are they going? And what's been your main focus so far with the Jackaroos? Yeah, look, it's been a real tough challenge for, you know, not only for bowls, but for all sports, you know, just maintaining that motivation, I think, has been a real challenge for the players. So um, I think now they can probably see that, you know, the events have been scheduled. You know, we've got we've got camps coming up. We've got uh, Commonwealth Games trials coming up and things like that. So, you know, that certainly has been a bit of a hurdle, but I, I think they can see, you know, that it, it's all sort of getting back to normal, you know, reasonably well, where... We're fairly lucky in Australia, I have to say, and I'm sorry about Melbourne. You know, you guys have really copped it, and I feel for you guys a lot. But as a whole, uh, as a country, we've we've been fairly lucky. So, yeah, hopefully things go back to normal soon. Yeah, has been tough down here over the last couple of days. We're speaking with Karen Murphy on Without Bias. Uh, local legends wanted search bowls clubs near me, and we do it for APR, proudly supporting Bowls Australia. APR dedicated to dedicated specialists ready to help. Call one thirteen fifty fifty. APR get set go. Uh, Karen, how did you enjoy getting back onto the green for BPL twelve and thirteen for the Sydney Lions? Oh, it was wonderful. I, I've always said it's, it's the most enjoyable week of the year at the BPL. So uh, love playing with the Sydney Lions BCIB um, franchise. Uh, have been you know playing with them um, you know ever since day dot since it started I suppose. So um, yeah, really enjoyed it. Loved getting out there and um, and playing against you know um, all all my mates and obviously uh, you know ex, ex teammates of mine yeah. as I've since retired. But um, <laughs> It's great. It's such a great. It's a great promotion for our sport. That event, you know, it's um, it's not a selection event. You know, the the players can really sort of show off their wares without the pressure of selection or anything on their shoulders. So, um, good fast format, great for television, great to sell the sport. So it's it's fantastic. And you mentioned there you retired. I wasn't aware of this until it was passed on to me today. Twenty five years at the highest level. How difficult was it? to make the decision to retire and get into coaching? Because I imagine it's very tough no matter what sort of athlete you are. Yeah, look, it's, um, I think, you know, Glass always said to me, you, you, you know when you know. And I know that sounds really hard and I never really understood it until I sort of felt like I did know. So um, for me, it was, um, you know, I still really enjoyed being around the team and the camps and events were wonderful, but um, it was just that week to week stuff that sort of, I got a bit bogged down with and, and lost a little bit of um, motivation uh, for that. So um, I don't know, I, can, I sort of feel like I can look back on my career and be really happy with, with what I've done. And, I, and COVID was a wonderful break away from the game for 12 months. You know, I sort of didn't feel like, um, you know, like I transitioning has been difficult for me because I, it did allow me to have that just break away completely for nearly 12 months. So there was no events on. So I suppose I didn't miss, you know, seeing the, the guys play at World Bowls or anything like that. But um, yeah, it's been a fairly sort of, um, you know, smooth transition, I suppose. And and I a lot of me sort of thinks, you know, after you've been playing for, for that long, you know, you sort of, mm. you long for something um different to do you know like I'm really excited about my new challenge I'm learning lots of of different things in this job um, and challenging myself in different areas so mm. that's that's exciting won't keep you too much longer but hey great news last week it was announced that you would join a list of big names to participate in the AIS women's leadership program which is great you become a pioneer for women in bowls and how rewarding was it to be a part of this program yeah, really, really pleased to um, to have found out that I was accepted into that program with some wonderful names such as Casey Delacqua and Juliet Haslam, Hockey Roo and um, Sally Pierce. And so obviously all of these, these athletes, these female athletes are in the same position as myself, transitioning into the workforce. And that's what the program's all about, sort of networking and transitioning into, uh, yeah, into life after sport, I suppose. So um, I'm sure some of the, um, so a lot of the things that I'll learn within the program will enhance my role as national assistant coach as well. Last one, and we appreciate you giving up some of your time. We got to talk about, I guess, the unfolding events that we spoke about a little bit before that have just happened in Victoria, the seven-day circuit breaker lockdown. How is this going to affect local clubs, participants, everyone at the uh, community level over the next week or so? Yeah, well, certainly everything will, will be on hold. Uh, I imagine, you know, all the club uh, events and things like that will be on hold. But um, I suppose there, there is a, you know, there is a, a seven-day sort of um, in, end of lockdown that you can sort of see. So hopefully that that is all it is. Um, <laughs> And things can get back to normal after that. But um, 
I just, you know, I actually mentioned this morning to someone that I just, like, Victoria's really copped it, you know, and there's no real, you know, no real reason mm. for it. You know, like I live in Sydney and you, you would think that, that Sydney with the population that we have would have probably been affected a lot more. So I do feel for you guys and, um, you know, you, you're well versed with the whole lockdown scenario. And it's <laughs> Unfortunately, not, it's we are. Not, um, <laughs> It's not it's not much fun, but um, you know, like I, I just hang in there, guys. There there is a light at the end of the tunnel. So yeah, best of luck with it, and just stay communicated. I think stay in touch with everyone, and stay connected. No, thank you for that. Hey, Karen, we really appreciate your time. Good luck with all of it. Good luck to the Jackaroos, and uh, thanks for joining us on Without Bias. And thanks for having me. Thanks very much. Anytime, Karen Murphy on Without Bias. We do it all. For Bowls Australia, local legends wanted. A Bowls Green is just up the road. Search Bowls Clubs near me and for Apia. Dedicated specialists ready to help. Call 13 50 50. Apia, get set, go. You're listening to Without Bias. Coming up after this, current Jackaroo, Chloe Stewart. Don't go anywhere. From the wide outdoors to the great indoors, this is Without Bias. Brought to you by Apia, proudly supporting Bowls Australia. Local legends wanted. A Bowls Green is just up the road. Search Bowls Clubs near me. Welcome back to Without Bias. All thanks to Bowls Australia. Local legends wanted. Search Bowls Clubs near me and our good friends at Apia, proudly supporting Bowls Australia. Apia, dedicated specialists, ready to help. Call 13 50 50. Apia, get, set, go. John Donahoe here. Been a great show so far. And now joining us is current Jackaroo, Chloe Stewart. Chloe, welcome to Without Bias. Hi, John. Thanks for having me. First off, congratulations on the bronze medal in uh, the women's triples in 20... Uh, triples, yep, in 2020. <laughs> COVID delayed. Uh, <laughs> Australian championships in... Dan- they were in Dandenong. How did you enjoy getting back to Melbourne and getting another medal? Um, yeah, no, it was really good. Um, you know, we've had a, obviously a lot of disruptions with COVID and everything else that's been going on. So it was fantastic to be back uh, out competing again, especially... Uh, in a, an Australian event. So, yeah, it was really good to be part of it and to come away with a bronze medal was, um, yeah, pretty good. Were you able to make your way out of Victoria in time before all this uh, this stuff happened lately? Um, yeah, so we came back on Tuesday. So, yeah, I think we've missed um, maybe the worst of it. So hopefully um, everyone that's down there at the moment can can get back in time. Let's hope so. Hey, you've been at the forefront of the bowling fraternity since the sports return to the national stage. You were a member of the juggernaut Tweedheads Ospreys in BPL 12 and 13, winning both editions. How have you, Aaron Tees and Corey Wedlock, gelled together uh, to become so successful? Um, yeah, no, it was really, really good. Um, you know, we all get on so, so well. Um, and we've been friends for a long time. We've, we've played with each other. Um, through juniors and um, yeah you know both Corey and TZ are great guys and yeah we just have a lot of fun out there and um, yeah it seems to pay pay off when we're we're playing off the <laughs> Tweed Ospreys. <laughs> and the Ospreys have won three of the past four BPLs. Uh, what's been the key to one of the most dominant franchises in the event's brief history? Um, I think I think the fact that yeah like we said before that we get on so well and um, you know, with with Wayne Turley sort of leading leading the way for us as our manager and coach, he really helps, um, you know, sort of keep us grounded and keeps us on track. So, yeah, Turles is definitely a big part of um, our success as well. And, yeah, I think we just all know um, our role uh, in the team. And, you know, it, it's just, yeah, fantastic to be part of. And I can't wait to play the next instalment. You're the best of the three, though, aren't you? Surely. <laughs> uh, I wish I could say that, John. But <laughs> no, I think, um, yeah, I think both of boys do an amazing job. And, um, yeah, you know, as we've seen, um, you know, from the last couple of BPLs, Aaron Tees, he's, he's the man, I think. But, you know, you can't go past <laughs> Corey either. He's a little guard too. There's nothing wrong with pumping up your own tyres now, Chloe. <laughs> we are speaking with <laughs> Chloe Stewart on Without Bias. Local legends wanted. Search Bowls Clubs near me, and we do it for Apia. 
uh, proudly supporting Bowls Australia. Apia, dedicated specialist, ready to help. Call 135050 Apia, get set, go. Chloe, it has been a fairly packed schedule so far since COVID has somewhat subsided. What's the key to planning out your schedule at the moment? Um, yeah, no, it, it's been pretty full on, you know, and I think, you know, it's, it's a massive part to have a lot of time management and to, you know, be able to plan everything around work and training and, um, yeah, the different events as well. Now, you moved from Victoria to the Gold Coast, as we spoke about, uh, about five years ago. What was the reason for that move? Um, well, I think the main reason uh, was to get away from the cold, to be honest. <laughs> oh, good good decision. <laughs> Very good decision. Um, but, yeah, you know, just, just the change of lifestyle and, um, you know, the Gold Coast is the bowls mecca of the world. So I'm very, very fortunate um, that, you know, I was able to make that decision and come up to the Gold Coast. And, um, yeah, you know, I've, it's definitely been the best decision I've ever made. And, you know, as much as I really miss my family and friends so much, I wish I could just move them up here too. Um, yeah, you know, I can always get back there and, um, you know, they're only a phone call away. It's only 12 degrees down here, Chloe. It's not that cold. It's <laughs> probably a nice 22 up here, I think. Oh, okay. Yeah, no, fair enough. That is a lot better. Hey, how has that helped your career progression uh, and getting into the Jackaroos squad? You obviously said that it's the bowls mecca of Australia. So uh, is that was that a right choice for you? Um, yeah, I, I think so. You know, um, ever since I moved up, um, I feel as though I have have progressed my game forward and um, yeah I feel like I've gained a lot of confidence and even just you know moving out of home and having to sort of grow up a bit and, you know it's it's sort of everything um, ties in together and yeah I think it's definitely been a massive help um, for my career and yeah hopefully I can just get better. What's next on the radar for you when are we going to see you in competition either for the Ospreys the Jackaroos whoever's next? Um, yeah I'm not too sure. We've we've got a camp um, in in July, so that's going to be a reactivation camp with the Jackaroos. Hopefully, with everything going ahead. Um, but yeah, Australian wise, I don't think there's too much planned for this year. Um, but there's definitely you know a lot of different competitions, and um, you know obviously the Australian Open's coming up. Mm. So hopefully, um, yeah, that that keeps on. What what does a bowls camp look like? We know that footy camps are all, you know, a lot of running, a lot of weights, you know, cricket camps very different to, to all that. What does a bowls camp entail? Are you on the on the weights floor at all? Um, no, I don't think we've really been too much in the No in the pumping gym iron. <laughs> no, not too much, but we most most of the time, like mostly every day we get out and um, you know, we're up for a brisk walk in the morning and a few stretches and so on and um, yeah, we're on the green most of the day and, um, yeah, there's normally a few sort of guest speakers and a few different um, workshops that we do. So, yeah, it, it, it all sort of goes pretty well, I think. Well, Chloe, we really appreciate you giving up some of your time. Good luck with what's to come next and uh, thanks for joining us on Without Bias. No worries. Thanks, John. Thanks for having me. Really appreciate it. Chloe Stewart there joining us on Without Bias. We do it all for Bowls Australia. Local legends wanted. A Bowls Green is just up the road. Search Bowls Clubs near me and for Apia. Dedicated specialists ready to help. Call 13 50 50 Apia. Get set. Go. Before we finish up tonight, our right at home players of the week this week, Natasha Van Eldick and Genevieve Delves. They put in stellar performances at the Australian Championships this week. Gold in the women's triples, which is magnificent, and women's pairs as well. That's absolutely phenomenal. So these two are on fire. Congratulations to them. Very proud of them. Uh, And they are the Right at Home Players of the Week. That's for Right at Home, Australia's leading provider of home care and disability support. Right at Home. For the best quality in disability support, aged and nursing care, Right at Home. Don't forget uh, to keep an eye on those two ladies. Uh, That is it for Without Bias this week. Don't forget, local legends are wanted. Bowls Green is just up the road. Search Bowls Clubs near me. There's plenty of them around, and I might even go and have a roll myself over the next couple of weeks once we get out of this lockdown. I do love uh, a little bit of Bowls uh, when I get an opportunity. A big thanks 
to our special guest, Karen Murphy. Uh, she's got uh, a lot on her plate with the Jackaroos coming up. Looking forward to seeing their progress. And Chloe Stewart, who's just up there in, in the Gold Coast, 22 degrees, she reckons, up there flying along. So she's going to uh, absolutely dominate for some time to come. Thanks for their time this evening. Hope you've enjoyed the show. If you've missed any of it, don't forget to check out the Bowls Australia website. And you can also find Without Bias on the podcast page at sen.com.au, or you can find it on your smartphones. Wherever you find your podcasts, we will be right there without bias. Easy to find. Uh, We do it, of course, also for APA dedicated specialists. They're ready to help at any time. Call 135050 APA, get, set, go. I'm John Nonho, filling in for Sammy Hargroves. Thank you for that. Hopefully uh, we we painted a nice picture of what's to come in the bowls world. Bye for now.